Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us. My name is Katie Starr, and I am with the Stanley Premium Western Forage marketing team. Stanley Premium Western Forage is a family-owned business located in southern Idaho with ideal growing conditions to raise some of the best quality forage in the country. We're here to serve you and your animals with high quality nutrition and comfort, along with valuable education to help them be happy and healthy. We are very excited to offer this educational webinar titled, What Do I Need to Know About Raising Chicks? Have you been thinking of taking the plunge into the wonderful world of backyard chickens? We're here to help provide you with the knowledge you need to ensure your adorable little chicks will grow to be happy and healthy egg producing companions. If you happen to be new to joining our webinars, we'll take just a minute to go over a few items so you are comfortable with viewing and participating in our webinar. If you're viewing this as a recording, feel free to skip over this section. We will also be selecting two winners today. One package will include the Chicken Chicks Spruce the Coop Herbal Fusion Nest Bock Herbs. Another will be the Chicken Chicks Sweet Coop Zeolite. And both winners will also receive a coupon for free Stanley product of their choosing at the end of the webinar. So be sure to stay with us till the end. We've taken a screenshot of an example of the attendee interface. You should see something that looks like this on your own computer desktop in the upper right corner. Clicking on the red box with the white arrow allows you to open and close the control panel anytime you'd like during the presentation. You're listening in using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed for you. You will also have an opportunity to submit questions via text to today's web presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. Please feel free to send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. And depending on how many questions that come in, we may not be able to address all of them within our time frame but we will certainly use them for future educational pieces and connect with you one-on-one -on -one if you reach out to us. That's all I have from an introductory standpoint. So allow me to introduce our presenter today, Kathy Shea Mormino. Kathy is the founder and one woman creative force behind her blog, The Chicken Chick, and her wildly popular Facebook page and social media network, where she shares a fun-loving, informative style to raising backyard chickens. Welcome, Kathy. Thanks, Katie, and hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, my first webinar, and certainly my first webinar with my partners at the Stanley Hay Company. Um, we are going to be talking about the basics of caring for baby chicks tonight, and we're gonna cover housing, feeding, and safety issues. And above all else this evening, what I want you to remember is that raising chicks is simple. And if you just keep the basics in mind, keep it simple, don't overcomplicate it, use an abundance of common sense, and you will enjoy your chicks, and they will be healthy and grow up to be happy egg layers in your backyard. So let's start with the housing aspect, and we're gonna talk about a chick brooder. And the word brooder simply refers to an enclosure where the chicks live before they move to the big girl coop. And a brooder can consist of any number of um, containers from a large puppy playpen to a rabbit hutch, a kiddie pool, my two favorites are a cardboard box and a puppy playpen. And the puppy playpen has overtaken the cardboard boxes only because they have a zipper. Uh, most of them have a zipper that closes the top that allows um, protection from uh, chicks flying out of the brooder. Um, they're very young when they learn to, to uh, fly and they can very easily escape the brooder and um, we need to manage a way to keep them inside. So whatever form of brooder you choose, make sure that it is the biggest possible or that you can expand it. Chicks grow really, really quickly. And so start with two square feet per chick. And if the chicks can't spread their wings out 
in theory, everyone at the same time, there's not enough space in the brooder. You need to expand. It's critically important that the chicks not be overcrowded. So I really discourage folks from using uh, plastic containers as brooders uh, because they outgrow them much too quickly. Um, so in terms of where the brooder should be located, you wanna make sure that it's in a temperature controlled location. Uh, most of us tend to raise our chicks inside the house. I know mine like to live in my office, but the dog doesn't care for that. I have a, <laughs> I have a Yorkie and he's not a fan of the chicks, but you wanna make sure your location is draft free and you, that you have access to electricity and some natural light. You want chicks to be able to get the benefit of a natural day, night life cycle. So as you can see from this picture on your screen, those chicks are spread around between the food and the water. They're not huddled together in a corner, which tells us that they are happy and um, not cold, not afraid, um, not suffering from a draft. So those, those are happy chicks. They're not huddled together. And that's what you want to see. So we talk about um, a substance on the floor of the brooder um, as litter. So litter manages waste. It manages the poop in the brooder. And chicks are little poop machines. So we need to make sure that we are keeping the brooder um, safe and clean and dry so that the chicks can grow up in the healthiest environment possible. So in the first couple of days when you get your chicks, if you order them from the post office or if you pick them up from the feed store, they'll generally be two to three days old. And you want to start um, with a flooring surface that is um, not slick. They need to be able to get a good grip with their little feet so that their legs don't um, uh, slip out from underneath them and cause a leg deformity, a common leg deformity. Um, so paper towels are a good place to start. I like to put puppy training pads underneath the paper towels in the brooder, um, particularly when I'm using uh, cardboard boxes because it keeps the brooder, um, if there are any uh, spills of water, for instance, the puppy training pads um, will absorb the water and it won't drip through to your cardboard box and ruin that. You never want to use newspaper in a brooder. It's much too slick. Uh, the ink can come up. Um, the chicks can eat it, um, but it's just not absorbent. So litter needs to be, um, it needs to help us manage the waste and moisture in in the coop, in the uh, brooder that the chicks generate. And it can't do that. Um, newspaper is not good at doing that. So um, it will just get wet and then it will be poopy and wet and then it's a mess. So never newspaper. Um, types, the most common uh, types and the best types of litter to use for chicks in a brooder are either pine shavings or a product such as um, Stanley's Flock Fresh, which is a combination of chopped straw, top, chopped timothy hay, and zeolite, which is an absorbent and actually binds um, ammonia to its surface. So it controls um, moisture and um potentially harmful ammonia odors in in your brooder so pine shavings and flock fresh are both available at tractor supply stores near you and there's a dealer locator on the stanley website where you can um, see where else it might be um, sold near you so in terms of feeding your chicks a chick's full-time job is to eat and so you should have chicken feed available chick starter feed needs to be accessible to the chicks at all times. <clears throat> Excuse me. A chick starter feed is um, formulated by poultry nutritionists to be nutritionally complete. So they're expected to eat a certain amount of feed at each stage and they will get 100% of what they need to grow and be healthy in that chick starter feed. So they don't need anything to help them digest it as older birds might when older birds are eating other things in addition to their chicken feed. So you don't need to provide grit to your chicks if they're only eating their crumbles, which is what I highly recommend. Um, I don't suggest giving treats to chicks and I'm not trying to be a buzzkill about the fact that it's fun to give our pets treats, but mostly that's fun for us. It's um, everything is new to chicks so you don't need to try to entertain them with treats and treats can only dilute their diet um think of 
think of their starter feed like you would um, uh, mother's milk. Um, if you were to put water in mother's milk, you're diluting it. If you're to put treats in your chick's brooder, um, that is diluting the complete nutrition in their perfect feed. So I say stay away from treats. They just don't need them. Baby chicks have approximately 12 taste buds when they hatch compared to our 9,000 to 10,000 taste buds. So really, they don't, they don't appreciate subtle flavors. They don't need treats for entertainment. Skip the treats. They're better off without them. So you want to offer feed, the chicken um, starter, the chick starter feed to your chicks who, until they switch over to layer feed, which will be at approximately 18 weeks or when they start laying eggs, whichever comes first. So chick starter feed up to 18 weeks or when the first bird starts laying eggs. Then you can switch everybody over to the layer feed. Um, and there are really only two types of feed that you need to concern yourself to choose between for baby chicks, and that is medicated or unmedicated starter feed. And the medication in start chick starter feed is called uh, amprolium. It is an anticoccidiostat. It is not an antibiotic. It is intended to protect chicks from developing coccidiosis, which is a, a very common and deadly intestinal disease that's spread through chicken poop. Um, and it exists in every environment that chicks are in. So they need to develop resistance to uh, coccidia, which are little protozoa in the poop, gradually over time. And they need to be exposed to poop a little bit at a time, not huge doses of it. That's why we need to keep the brooder clean and dry. So if you are providing your chickens with medicated chick starter feed, you want to make sure, well, let me back up uh, to say that you need to know the vaccination status of your chicks before selecting a feed. And so if your chicks have received the vaccine at the hatchery for coccidiosis, you need to make sure that they don't eat the medicated chick starter feed, that you're giving them unmedicated chick starter feed because the medication will kill the uh, live protozoa in the vaccine that they received. And so you need to know which vaccine type they received. If you if you order them directly from the hatchery, you have the option to choose either the Merix vaccine or the coccidiosis vaccine. And so know what you're selecting because that will bear on your chick starter feed choice. Um, okay, and then so uh, water is the essential nutrient and water can be the bane of your existence as a chicken keeper when caring for baby chicks, but it doesn't have to be. It is critically important that chicks have access to clean water in clean containers at all waking hours. So when, if you're picking up your chicks from the post office, you will need to train your chicks um, to eat and drink. They will not have eaten um, or had anything to drink before they arrive to you. So the first thing you wanna do is introduce them to water. And uh, before you even let their little feet hit the brooder floor, you wanna to touch their beak to the water. And whether that's in a, a traditional chick drinker, which is an open water source, or a poultry nipple drinker like shown in uh, this photo here, you wanna to touch their beak to the water. They will then associate, um, they will then understand you know, what it is and where they can go and get it again. So. If your chicks have arrived in the mail and they look a little bit um, wilted, they look like they had a rough trip, they're not as active as they should be, um, you can put vitamins and electrolytes in the water for a day or two, but never more than a day or two for baby chicks because you can throw their electrolytes out of balance um, by feeding, uh, by offering it them vitamins and electrolytes in the water for longer than they need it. So. Um, only if the only if the chips look like they're in tough shape should you offer vitamins and electrolytes. It's not to be routinely done. And chicks that you get at the feed store will already have been eating and drinking, and so you don't need to worry about vitamins and electrolytes at all if you pick your chicks up from the feed store. So you have a choice of water containers to use. You can either use the traditional open drinkers. Um, which if you do, you want to make sure you raise them up off the floor with like a tuna, an empty, um, or a tuna can or a uh, similar, a little platform that keeps it up out of the litter. And um, that will decrease 
um, the amount of litter they can kick into the water and somehow they'll always figure out a way to poop in it. So it kind of doesn't matter how high you raise it in a traditional drinker, they're gonna figure out a way to soil it. It's just critically important that you stay on top of keeping that water clean uh, if, if and when they do poop in it because they cannot be healthy if they're drinking sewage routinely. So elevate the water in a traditional uh, a drinker and change it off and if you must, um, a bare minimum of once a day. Um, but the poultry nipple waterers that are like this one that's shown in this uh, photo is that's called a brooder bottle cap. It's from a company known as the Chicken Fountain. You can order them online at their website. You can get them in tractor supply stores and on Amazon. Um, but there are any number of poultry nipple drinkers for baby chicks that you, you can use. And that eliminates all concerns uh, for changing the water. It eliminates the possibility of the chicks pooping in it and eliminates the opportunity uh, for litter to get into the, the water. So I strongly suggest, advise, and recommend using a poultry nipple drinker. Um, it's just the best way to ensure your chicks are getting the essential nutrient uncontaminated. Um, so that's food, that's water, that's shelter. Now let's talk about safety. Um, chicks, um, Chicks are vulnerable when they're two, three days old, one, two, three days old. They're not able to regulate their own body temperature. And an adult chicken has a normal core body temperature that ranges between 103 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So when a baby chick is hatched, it it is on a, first of all, it's lower than 103 degrees. So they're they're cooler than that. Normally a mother hen would keep them warm, but it takes them weeks to be able to regulate their body temperature even when they get to a point where um, they've reached their, their adult core body temperature. So we have to maintain their warmth for them. They are unable to do that. So baby chicks need to be um, brooded inside uh, in, in a space that's at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit um, for the first, um, at, at least for the first several weeks, that temperature applies um, to the to the space. We're talking about the ambient temperature of the room that your brooder is in. Um, and you are going to uh, want to pay attention to the chick's behavior, chicks that are um, huddled together um, while they're awake um, is a sign that they are cold, afraid, or that there's a draft on them from someplace. And if they're cheeping, noisily, they are unhappy for some reason. That usually means that they're lost, cold, um, hungry, wet. There's a problem. Noisy chicks are unhappy chicks. Happy chicks are quiet chicks. So that's a good rule of thumb. If you're wondering about how warm they need to be, watch them and listen to them and use your common sense. There's no magic trick to it. A mother, If a mother hen um, has a brain big enough to be able to regulate the body temperature of her chicks and keep them safe, we all can do it too. So please consider the safety factor when uh, selecting a heat source for your chicks. Now, traditionally, folks have used um, uh, heat lamps, 250 watt red heat lamps to keep their chicks warm. Um, historically, this is the most common device. It's simple and um, it is by far the most dangerous piece of equipment you can use to keep chickens. And I, I don't recommend to people um, that people use heat lamps with chickens for any purpose at any age ever. There are just such a fire hazard with flying animals. There's really just no way to ensure that there is no fire risk when using a heat lamp. Um, the clamps are easily knocked free. Um, the hangers on the heat lamp can dislodge. The bulbs will explode if a droplet of water is splashed by the chicks up into them, and it will sh it will send shards of 500 degree glass into the brooder. Um, kids can knock them over. Animals can knock them over. They're just unsafe at any speed, and they cause a lot of problems for 
uh, baby chicks, um, not only from a safety perspective, but from uh, uh, the perspective of being overheated. Um, I just can't can't uh, say enough about how dangerous they are and um, encourage you to use a safer option. Um, backyard chicken keeping is a pretty novel way of keeping chickens. Chickens as pets is different. Um, and we have technologies that have evolved as backyard chicken keeping has evolved. So we now have heat lamp alternatives, which are radiant heat sources that act more like a mother hen. Uh, the e the Brincy Eco Glow Brooder that's shown in this photo is one of the types of radiant heaters that I use. Um, and yes, it costs double what a heat lamp uh, and assembly and backup bulb would cost you, but it is infinitely safer. It acts more like a mother hen. There's no fire hazard involved in it. There's no guessing. You don't need to put a um, you don't need to put a, a thermos a thermometer in your brooder to ensure that the te the, the birds are ke being kept a certain temperature. Mother hen doesn't come equipped with a, a thermometer. The chicks know when they're cold. They scoot underneath her abdomen and her wings and they use her body heat to warm up. They use these brooders, these radiant heat brooders the same way. If the chicks are chilly, they go underneath and take a nap and warm up. And if if they're not, then they're out and about in the brooder. They're eating, they're drinking, they're playing, they're getting into um, little chick mischief. Um, another benefit um, to these radiant heaters is that you don't have light on the birds 24 seven. It's not natural for chicks to, to have constant light. That causes a lot of stress to the chicks for a heat lamp to be on in the brooder 24 hours a day. So um, there's no light involved with these radiant heaters. And just like with a mother hen, there's no light underneath her belly. So it, it provides them with a natural diurnal uh, day night cycle that they need um, to get into the groove of. And the height's easily adjusted on these units. Um, it makes the location where you put your brooder more flexible and concerning yourself about finding a, a way to tether up a heat lamp so that it doesn't burn your house down. Um, but it has to be really the only limitations are, you know, it's price point um, and that it needs to be kept in a room that's at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Because it's not it's not warming up the entire brooder. The chicks are warm underneath it. It it warms up the objects underneath um, that are underneath it, not the entire room. So you have to you have to make sure you're using it in a, in a the appropriate space that's at least fifty degrees Fahrenheit. So chicks use far chicks require far less heat than the traditional heat lamp formula suggests to us that they need. The traditional formula is that chicks need 95 degree um, heat from a heat lamp uh, for the first week, 90 for the second week, 85 for the third week, on and on and on. But if you use one of these radiant heat panels, you will see that chicks are very soon, with, within two or three weeks, they are very soon free of um, needing the warmth of these devices. So I say for the safety of uh, your chicks, the health of your chicks, and more importantly, uh, the safety of your family, if you're brooding these chicks inside and the safety of your property, if you're not, consider these radiant heaters as an investment in like an insurance policy on your family. Chicken coops, homes, and people are burned down and killed every single month from using heat lamps, and I can't discourage their use enough. So I say, if you if you can't afford, um, you know, the cost of one of these, wait until next year. Save up your pennies and wait until next year. It's just not worth your um, losing property or, or uh, family or animals um, to use a, a heat lamp. So the key things that I want you to remember um, about raising chicks is that it's really easy. Um, spend time with your chicks, enjoy them, keep it simple, but keep it safe. Give them a safe brooder location where you can observe them easily. Um, make sure your dog or cat can't get into the brooder and wreak havoc. Make sure your toddler can't climb over the box. Um, 
You want to keep the brooder clean and dry. Those are the primary objectives. So people will get all concerned about, oh, when do I need to clean it? How often? Um, just if, if, it's, if any part of your brooder is wet, it needs to be cleaned. If um, the chicks are getting um, little manure balls collecting on the ends of their toenails, your brooder is filthy. Clean it. You need to keep it clean and dry for optimum health for your chicks. So we should never have a conversation about ammonia, the smell of ammonia in a chicken brooder or in a chicken coop. Um, that means that the, the litter is not being managed properly and the environment's not healthy for your chickens. So when purchasing vaccinated chicks, please be sure that you know which vaccines the chicks received. If you order them from the hatchery, um, you will have the option uh, to select um, the vaccine. And it's important to know when choosing your starter feed, which whether your chicks received the coccidiosis vaccine. If they did not receive the coccidiosis vaccine, um, it's a good idea to give them medicated chick starter feed uh, to protect them against that deadly um, intestinal disease known as coccidiosis. If your chicks did receive the coccidiosis vaccine, then you don't want to give them medicated chick starter feed because it will negate the um, the live vaccine. Um, in terms of water, can please consider a poultry nipple water. They cost as much as the traditional waterers that are going to give you a headache, that are going to make your brooder wet, that the chicks are going to poop in, they're going to get litter in. Um, consider, consider using those to ensure the, the availability of clean water for healthy chicks. And please put safety, safety first, your safety, your bird safety, your family safety, your property safety. And don't use a heat lamp to keep your chicks warm. Use a radiant heat source. It's just, um, it's just so much safer. So that's all I have. I am happy to answer any questions you may have that pertain to chick care. I know a lot of you are um, who are listening may not be um, first-time chick keepers, and we do we do want to try to limit the conversation to um, topics surrounding chick care if we can. Thank you, Kathy. Um, that was an excellent presentation. So real quick, before we jump into questions, uh, I just want to uh, share a reminder that we're going to go ahead and be drawing our winners for the free product following this Q&A session. Uh, so please stay with us on that. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on a few questions that we had submitted today. Again, feel free to still submit questions through the questions pane in your attendee control panel if you'd like. Um, I know we've had quite a few come in already, but please keep them coming. And Kathy, our first question that we're gonna go ahead and go with today, are any vaccines or oral meds necessary? If so, what and when? So when um, talking about purchasing chicks, um it's really a personal preference uh you really um it this is a topic that's really kind of too big for for this for this type of webinar um but there are generally two vaccines that you need to choose between um or decide about one is a Merix vaccine which the Merix vaccine protects chicks from uh, developing um, a herpes-like vi virus um, that can cause tumors in various parts of their body um, as they grow. Um, that has nothing to do with the type of starter feed you will select. So the Merix vaccine is basically um, a vi addresses a, a virus that can cause um, potentially fatal tumors in your chickens. Um, the coccidiosis vaccine is the other you'll need to decide about if you're ordering your chicks online. And that um, does relate to the type of chick starter feed you will use. So if your chicks do receive the coccidiosis vaccine, basically what's, uh, th what that vaccine does is it puts the live, a dose of the live coccidia protozoa on board. Your chicks need to develop a resistance 
to this protozoa a little bit at a time. And the way they do that is by being exposed to their own poop in reasonable amounts. So they will pick up little, um, little bits of the coccidi coccidia in their environment naturally. What the vaccine does at the hatchery is it gives them a kickstart um, by putting some of those protozoa in their body. So it's a live vaccine. That's why if you give them the medicated chick starter feed, um, it will kill those live protozoa. So you don't wanna do that. Your chicks will be rendered um, completely um, defenseless against the, vac the, um, the intestinal disease. So uh, one, other, one other point that's really important that I wanna mention about the medicated chick starter feed is that under no circumstances should medicated feed be thought of as a medication for a problem. So it is only intended to keep the um, population of the coccidia protozoa down to a dull roar in the chick's um, intestines as they're developing their resistance. It will not cure them if they get coccidiosis. So if your birds get coccidiosis, which is, um, which is um, life-threatening to baby chicks, um, they need amprolium put in their water stat because they can die from it within 24 hours or less. So medicated chick starter feed is not a medication. It will not treat coccidiosis. Super important point. Excellent, thanks Kathy. And thank you Brenda for that question. Our next question is from Tracy. And Tracy wants to know, Tractor Supply has Dumore feed and there are two chick formulas. One has 16% protein, another is a little higher. Which do you recommend? Um, I wasn't aware of that. I, I use Purina feeds for my birds and I just either, I choose um, the medicated chick starter feed. So um, if it, you'll have to look at the bags to see is one medicated and one's not. I'd need to know more information before um, uh, before answering that. I'm not really sure. Okay, um, we'll see. Okay. We'll see if Tracy okay. comes back with anything and um, see if we can get back to that one then. Okay, and while we wait, um, Tina says my chicks need to go in the garage because they are too big for our indoor brooder. It is still getting down to 35 to 40 degrees at night. Should I put their heating plate in with them? What else can I do? Will they be okay out there or is it too early? How old were they? Three weeks, did she say? Um, she did not say. She just said that it gets down to about 35 to 40 degrees at night. Yeah, I need to know how old the chicks are. Certainly, um, chicks that are a week or two old cannot be out in a garage in those temperatures. Five weeks. So by five weeks, um, they probably still don't have their um, full complement of feathers. They're probably not fully feathered yet. They probably still have some of that awkward uh, chick down. So they're not going to be able to regulate their temperatures um, sufficiently to be out in 30 degree um, temperatures. I I wouldn't. I would I would consider using an oil filled radiator type heater for your garage, th those radiant heat panels, again, have to be used in a room with an ambient temperature of at least 50 degrees. So you need to get the space to at least 50 degrees in order for them, um, the, the radiant heat panels to be effective. Okay, and it looks like Tracy got back to us. So on the, the two different chick formulas, one with a 16% protein and another being a little higher, she said neither of those are medicated. I don't think those are chick starter feeds. That sounds like a layer. That sounds like layer ration to me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Uh, let's see. And then I could Tam be wrong. But yeah, I'd, I'd want to. I want to look at the bags myself. Right. Right. Yeah, it's sure. hard. It's hard if you can't see it in front of you. So Tammy would like to know. Let's see. If you have a choice between the coccidiosis and Merrick's vaccinations, which is better and why? Well, it's they're not they're not it's not a question of one or the other. They they each address a different serious problem. So you can have a chick vaccinated for both. It's not it's not a one or the other situation. 
Was that was that a question submitted earlier? Because I think we just went over that, and I want to make sure um, she's not confused. It was actually just a few minutes ago. Okay, so I kind of spoke to it a little bit earlier, but again, it's not an either or situation. They each address a different problem. So the Merrick's disease uh, prevents against um, the development of tumors in a condition um, also known as range paralysis. So the chicks the chickens can get um, paralyzed essentially. Um, and so Merrick's, the Merrick's vaccine doesn't prevent the chicks from getting Merrick's disease. It just prevents them from developing the um, deadly tumors associated with it. The coccidio coccidiosis vaccine is a live virus, uh, sorry, is a live protozoa that is given to the chicks to help them to help kickstart their immune system into developing resistance to this protozoa that naturally occurs in their environment that if they get too much of it at once will cause intestinal disease that can be fatal to them. So your best one of one of your best defenses against the uh, your birds getting coccidiosis is keeping the brooder clean and dry. So if you're doing a good job, you haven't overcrowded your brooder, um, you're doing a good job keeping up with um, a dry brooder, so none of your litter is wet, you can change your litter out about once a week. That should be sufficient. So in terms of uh, the vaccine, the coccidiosis vaccine, keep you, uh, protect your chicks by keeping the brooder clean and dry, so not too much poop, never wet in the brooder on the brooder floor and um, then make sure you're feeding it appropriately um, based on whether they did get the vaccine or not. Perfect. Or oxidiosis. And um, I know you touched on this a little earlier in the presentation, but it looks like uh, Dina, sorry if I mispronounced your name, but uh, just a few moments ago, she did have a question about, I have two chicks that are four months and two that are five months. One has started to lay eggs, but the others haven't. When should I switch to layer food? So good question. So it's perfectly okay for laying hens to eat a um, a flock raiser diet, which is a starter slash grower. It's a little bit lower in protein than a starter feed. Um, it is it does not have the calcium of a layer feed. So everybody can eat the starter grower. Your layers can eat it, and the 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 birds that aren't laying eggs can eat it too. Uh, you just want to always make sure that laying hens have access to oyster shells in a separate dish apart from their feed. That will give them the dietary calcium that they need to make strong eggshells. But the younger birds, um, you know, much younger you know, than, than four months, um, can be harmed by eating uh, layer feed because it has calcium they don't need, that their kidneys don't know what to do with, and that can create uh, kidney damage. So. Uh, you never want to feed birds that aren't um, aren't laying eggs uh, a laying feed a uh, layer a layer feed. Perfect. Perfect. And Kelly would like to know how many chicks should someone start with? Well, it really depends on the reason that you're getting them. So, are you getting them as companion animals? Are you getting them because you need eggs? Are you getting them because uh, you want eggs for a family of two, because you want eggs for a family of six? Are you getting them because you want to, you know, have um, eggs for your family and sell them? So it, it really depends. Most uh, feed stores have minimums that you have to buy. So I know in tractor supply this year, in most states in the country, there are is a, a four chick minimum, which is lower than it has been. Uh, there are exclusions. Of course, my state is excluded as one of those. Um, <laughs> you have to buy a minimum of, of six chicks. Um, and that's for the safety of the chicks and to make sure that people aren't um, aren't uh, using chicks as um, uh, photo props for Easter or as Easter basket fillers. So, um, you know, usually four is the minimum you have to buy. Uh, it depends. It depends on the regulations in your town. So I, I'd need to know a lot more information about your particular circumstances 
um, in order to suggest how many would be good for you. I I say start small, start with the, the fewest um, you can um, you can in the beginning if you're just not sure. Um, because if you start with too many too soon, you're setting yourself up uh, for challenges that you just don't need as a beginning chicken keeper. There's a there is a, a well known condition known as chicken math where you think you're going to get four chicks to start with, and by the time uh, your first batch of chicks is four weeks old, you're already thinking about the next breeds that you want to add to your flock. So there will always be more chickens. Start small and then and then grow as you gain a, a comfort level and confidence with keeping chickens. Excellent. Uh, let's see. And then Lisa would like to know, what do you look for in a chick when picking them out? Uh, for example, signs of being healthy. So if you are looking at a feed store at chicks um, in the bin, you want to make sure that the chicks are active. Um, you want to make sure that they are eating and drinking, that they're um, moving around with the other chicks. I mean, chicks eat, drink, poop, and sleep. That's their, that's their whole existence. So uh, whatever most of the other chicks are doing, they should be doing too. Um, a chick that's listless in the corner and not very active or that looks like it um you know has its eyes closed and standing there it looks hunched up um these are signs that there there may be um a congenital problem with the chick and they may not not every chick that makes it to the feed store is going to be um, necessarily fit for survival there are issues that uh, take some time to uh, present themselves um, sometimes the shipping of the chicks from the hatchery to the feed store takes a toll on the birds and not all of them can handle that stress. So not all chicks are equally suited to, to survival. So if you want to pick the, um, you know, some, so, somebody needs to um, take the, the chicks <laughs> who need some help. And if you're up for that challenge and you want to, you want to pick the weak chicks, that's fine, but just be realistic about your expectations in terms of their potential survivability. If they look poorly at three days old, they're probably um, not going to survive too much longer. So um, for the most part, chicks that you see in the feed store should, um, should, should look okay because the staff monitors them, hopefully, uh, wherever you're buying your chicks. But um, the other thing that's important to look for, and if, your feed store doesn't allow you to handle the chicks ask the uh, team member who is helping you um, get your chicks if they can turn the chick over you want to look underneath the bird to see its um, abdomen area where its um, belly button is there there is an area beneath the vent that's where the poop and ultimately the eggs will come out of the hen uh, that is a different exit than the um, belly button area. So the belly button area is just beneath the vent and you wanna make sure that um, there is um, no oozing from the belly button. There may be, there may be a string, um, you know, just like a regular umbilical cord as you would think of from um, a human infant, but it should be dry, it shouldn't be oozy, the abdomen shouldn't look swollen. Before a chick hatches, it absorbs the egg yolk into its abdomen. And that serves as its first um, power pack, like its nutrition source for the next several days. Uh, it's basically mother nature's way of nourishing the chick and hydrating it until she can finish hatching all the eggs because they don't all hatch at the same moment. It can take a, a number of days. So the egg yolk sustains the chick. And that's why we can ship chicks in the mail because they have this power pack, this protein and fat power pack on board by way of the egg yolk in their abdomen. But sometimes that abdomen um, doesn't heal properly and infection can, um, uh, can set in called umphalitis and it's typically a, a fatal condition once the bacteria is inside their body. So you wanna make sure that, that, um, that they're um, belly button area is fully healed, that there's no 
no string dried or gooey on it. And um, basically that the chick looks alert and active. Great. Uh, and let's see, we have time for one more quick question. Uh, I want to try to fit one more in. How many chicks can fit under an Eco Glow brooder? Use of multiple of these brooders? What was the last part of that? Um, I was trying to, to see what it is. So it says use multiple of these brooders or use multiple of these brooders. I okay, think so what depending on the manufacturer of, of your radiant heat panel for baby chicks, um, and I should caution too that um, these radiant heaters for baby chicks always should require the chicks to walk underneath them. You should never buy a heating mat for a baby chick. That is, um, heating mats are not for keeping baby chicks warm. So pay no attention to what's on the photograph, on the packaging sometimes. Read the back and make sure uh, you understand the manufacturer's uh, suggested use of this beyond the photo. Um, the manufacturers will generally tell you how many chicks the size of your radiant heat panel um, uh, will accommodate. And so I know Brincy has a 20 chick um, Eco Glow and they have a 50 chick Eco Glow. If you're going to be getting um, 30 or 40 chicks, you can get two Eco Glows, Eco Glow 20s and put them side by side. That's totally fine. Or not put them side by side, just um, have them in the brooder. You can, or you can get a 50 and um, it will be bigger than they need. So it depends, you know, pay, just read the manufacturer's recommendation for it, but certainly you can use more than one in a brooder at a time. Remembering uh, that these radiant heat sources are not warming up the entire space as a heat lamp would. So a, a heat lamp just provides constant heat to the entire brooder all the time. And yes, you can raise it or lower it to moderate the temperature, but truly the chicks can never get away from all of the heat that's blazing down from that 250 watt lamp. The radiant heat sources are much different. The chicks have to be uh, underneath and or in contact with the brooder from above in these radiant heat sources to benefit from its warming properties. So much safer, much healthier, much more natural, a little bit more expensive, but so worth it. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy, and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. We really appreciate your time and, and interest in wanting to learn more about proper care for your animals. Before we wrap up, we'll go ahead right now and announce our winners. So our first winner will receive a bag of the Chicken Chicks Spruce the Coop Herbal Fusion Nest Box Herbs and a coupon for free Stanley product of your choosing. And the winner is Dina Lynch. So congratulations, Dina. And our second winner will receive a bag of the Chicken Chick Sweet Coop Zeolite and a free coup a coupon for free Stanley product of your choosing as well. And the winner is Tracy Osborne. So congratulations, Tracy. Uh, Dina and Tracy, we will get with you, um, email you to get your mailing information so we can send out your prizes. If you have any other questions that weren't answered during today's presentation, please feel free to contact Stanley's customer relations team. The phone number and email are available on this final slide. And you can also reach out to Kathy on her Facebook page as well. Product information, the Stanley Barn Bulletin blog, and many other resources can be found on our website at stanleyforage.com. When you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation, and it would be greatly appreciated if you would complete that for us. Your feedback will really help us create better webinars for you and help us to identify some great topics for future webinars. You will also receive a follow-up email within about 24 to 48 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar if you'd like to go back and reference it. The recording should be available for about a week following today's webinar, and then it will also be available on our website under Nutritional Resources. 
So on behalf of Stanley Premium Western Forage and Kathy the Chicken Chick, thank you so much for joining us for this webinar and we hope you have a great rest of your week.